good morning good evening it depends on when you listen to this audio or video this is once again uh, uh, prabhu uh, the founder of uh, academy for market orientation of india which is afmai uh we get into the speech i just want to let the listeners know that i don't have a script in mind i don't have anything uh, written or well defined i just speak out of whatever i get from my heart or mind and um, so i wanted to listen listeners to bear with me in terms of uh, uh, the modulations the gap and the pause which i give uh, so first of all apologies even before getting into that uh, uh, actual topic uh, because i don't have the uh, uh, editing mechanism or i don't put my time or invest my time in editing uh, in terms of giving this as a uh, a streamlined product let's move on to the topic and uh, today we will be discussing about uh, the most important aspect of a relationship which is relationship and conflict resolution in relationship so as i said in the beginning i don't have uh, any script in my mind so i will go with the flow uh, most of the times in life uh, you know um, uh, co- relationship conflicts are very painful because uh, um, it 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 causes trauma uh, emotional trauma it causes depression it's it it may spoil our day it may spoil um, uh, our work life balance uh, it may have an impact on career it may have an impact on health and everything and needless to say why it is very important but it is very important to understand uh, why typically uh, uh, relationships move on to a scenario of conflict Uh, most of the times um uh, the way i look at it from my uh, experience of uh, few decades it's because people have a very very defined uh, way of looking at things you know it is it becomes very simple for them and the brain to classify things either as good or bad either as right or wrong and stand by one side because it becomes it becomes a tedious task for the brain you know if you say that both are right if it becomes a tedious task for the brain it, if you say that there is this is right and this is wrong, wrong as well and this is good and this is bad as well so what happens is we wanted to take one side because the brain is more convenient in taking one side and say this is right and this is my stand or this is bad and this is my stand that is fundamentally the uh, way in which uh, we are inclined or tempted to look at any situation by taking a stance this can be defined and dealt in terms of giving threshold for maturity levels but let's not get into that let's be let's talk more from a common sense perspective it's basically we want to take a stand define stand either it's good or bad or either it's right or wrong and we want to take one side second if we want to take good or bad if we want to take the sides of right or wrong how typically it happens on what basis we take that right or wrong is the next question most of the times in my experience in my understanding in my experience of difficult situations we take that right or wrong based on few things one what has been inculcated to us as values which could be the parental thing the family thing second is what has been acquired by by us through the society and friends the third is okay which is the most important aspect which i feel is what is convenient to us at this point in time and what is risk free okay so what happens is most of the times okay the first two factors what has been given to us is the intrinsic values from the family and things like that what has been acquired by us beyond all these things the third aspect what is convenient to us what stand if we take it is risk free what stand if we take that we can move on with you know uh, with 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 peace and things or a happy moment for the day is what typically the mind is inclined to take a stance these are the factors basically which determines which stand that we take i would say in my experience the third factor the third factor is the most important factor in terms of leading to relationship conflicts because a conflict comes when there is a expectation deviation 
the first two things whatever i said you know to certain extent it is a constant whatever values that you have acquired from family if you say these are my values throughout the relationship you will stick on to the values and you won't change so it remains almost a constant second whatever you say which you have acquired from the society and friends and things like if you say this is what i believe is right or wrong that is almost constant but which is lesser constant than the first first one which is also variable but what happens is the third one is almost vulnerable because as humans we are always inclined to take risk free decisions we are always inclined to look at things from a risk free perspective and we tend to respond or react to the situation so that it is risk free for us so that we are peaceful for the day and so that we are able to move ahead happily this third aspect of looking at the situation from a risk free mechanism so that we are able to move ahead positively so that we are able to move ahead peacefully without understanding without empathizing the other person's situation without empathizing how the same situation has affected the other person who was involved in the relationship is where the relationship conflict starts let me also uh, dwell little more deeper into it say a situation has happened and what immediately the mind looks into that is and if you you have a disagreement with that situation you have a disagreement with the concerned person who is involved in the relationship the first thing the mind will invariably look at this whose mistake is this this is the first thing the mind will incline to why this question of whose mistake is this comes because you want to take a side whether i am good or bad or i am on the right side or i am on the wrong side because that is the way that the mind is tuned to work we hardly think at a conflict situation or a particular situation can there be a possibility of whatever i am thinking as right be wrong or can there be a possibility of what i am thinking as good to be bad we don't think so let's understand that at any point in time in a particular situation which disappoints you which goes against our philosophy take some time to see why is the other person raising the voice why is the other person so much scribbling about it but for me it is nothing it, it was a very normal thing for me can there be something which is so important in it for the other person because it's our relationship right can there be something which is so painful to the other person that has made him or her to react to this extent we don't look at it in that way we may not even understand what the other person is going through so it may be a very simple thing for us but it may be a very dreadful thing for the other person so let's not take the sides of good or bad or right or wrong let's be neutral and look at can there be something which can be listened from the other person as well the second aspect is the expectation deviation you would have communicated to the other person that this is what i am this is what my values are and i would not deviate it most probably most of the situations the values that we communicate we will always stick on to because we don't change which could be family values or it could be social inherited values but the third aspect is which is i said the risk free way of looking at the situation we are more vulnerable okay let me demonstrate with an example in a relationship in the initial days when we started to get together and we you know we would probably you know take that extra step go that extra mile to give that happiness to the other person when the relationship matures over a period of time we become a risk free kind of a mode and we take decisions i thought you would expect this to understand because i am busy today do you still believe i can come there and take that extra mile and do that for you will you not understand me but this is a situation where you are going to the third aspect and then you are looking at the situation from a risk free mechanism where you expect the opponent to understand that you are in a problem but the opponent may or may not depending on the situation will not be in a position to understand your situation he would still expect you to take that 10 miles extra step and recognize his emotions or her emotions whatever it be depending on the situation so the third aspect which is not a constant which is the way of looking at a situation from a risk free is more likely to create relationship conflicts in most of the situation so what is the 
solution to it or how to handle it i think we have to understand the crux of the problem between a and b say for example the b is expecting something from a and a is unable to give for whatever may be it may be genuine reasons of the a but how can we handle this situation typically the words a you know tell or display to b is when they are not able to give and there is a conflict they say these are the statements did i ask you to do you said this on that day and you are doing like this today if you want uh, you know you may uh, proceed it's your choice and your freedom i didn't expect you from this you know what b is in pain b is in suffering you know any statements okay which however may be correct your situation may be correct your your tunes may be correct your uh, rationality may be correct but when you express a statements which is unattached to the relationship for which a and b together has built and b is looking at recognition for the relationship which has been built by both of them it puts b down more and more more and more and it may take him or her to a more emotional trauma and more depression b at the end of the day in any kind of relationship conflict may not even expect what he want or what she wants from a but he or she may expect the recognition for the emotion or he or she may may want you to understand that if you don't do this it will pain to me this extent why don't you just understand it this most of the times doesn't reach a a would look at the situation from a rational angle and expect the b to understand the third aspect of this entire relationship conflict which i see is there is always in life a good situation a comfortable situation there is always in life a bad situation it's not defined good or bad but from a from a normalcy point of view we have a comfortable day and from a normalcy point of view we have a bad day imagine b might have a bad day a might have a good day so the confidence level of a in a particular day would be very high so that a can look at the situation from a rational angle the confidence level of b in a particular day could be low so that b cannot look at the particular situation in a rational angle and b looks for emotional support you know what a would say i thought you were more mature and you know i wanted you to look at this and you don't you not even can't you not even understand what i am saying but ultimately it is not about b's intense in in intent not to understand you it's b's inability on the particular day that he or she cannot understand you cannot be in your position to look at it from a rational angle because b is emotional so a has to wait and give that b time and a has to talk in words so that b's emotions are recognized rather than thrusting the rationality of why you are not able to understand the situation but most of the times we tend to that we tend we get into the mode of thrusting our rationality and then say if you are not able to understand this uh, if you are not able, able to you are not like this and all those uh, questions which doesn't deal with emotions of b is more likely to come up rather than concerns or points addressing the pains of b this is why you know these arguments continue arguments uh, prolong and it get drags on and drags on and drags on because the third or the fourth way in which typically uh, we handle the problem is i told again b may not want what he or she wanted from you now b wanted to validate the emotional relationship because he is in a trauma he is in a pain he is he is he is he is concerned that his emotions are not addressed from whom he has he he or she has lot of expectations what we typically do is most of the times as a response to that situation we make statement like this we say don't talk about this we say i don't want to talk about this if you want to talk about this uh, you know i won't meet you if you want to talk about this i will not uh, pick the phone you know what these things actually takes b to even more depression and even emotional trauma because 
B is not looking for actually what he wanted for. B is now looking for recognition of his emotions that is, is A able to see my pain of not getting what I wanted. Why is that A not able to see my pain of what I wanted? But A will always think and say and take that risk free mode of decision. I don't want to get into this because it is eating my time and everything and uh, I would not even want to talk about this so please don't talk about this. But it is, it is like closing a, a bottle which is a full of pressure and then you know tentatively moving away from it. But what we may really need is you know that 5 or 10 minutes of recognition of the emotions, 5 or 10 minutes of uh, you know uh, words which may pacify or console uh, and 5 or 10 minutes of uh, time in which you discuss about, you know, what is your concern? I never expected this from you. Uh, why are you reacting like this for a small situation? Um, is it something so painful? Uh, you know, uh, I know that it is painful, but I don't have a choice, so I couldn't do. I don't know why, you know, at times people can't look at from B's point of view and then do. I also wanted to bring in uh, the 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 energy flow angle of any relationship see any relationship from an from a physics point of view it's an energy flow a person with high energy will attract person towards low energy and this energy flow from high energy to low energy is the formation of any relationship what happens is over a period of time either both the energy should come constant or the higher energy person invariably gives more and more more and more more and more and the lower energy person becomes energy of high person of high energy so what happens is the positive which was one side high has become negative in over a period of time and the negative which was one once upon a time has become positive so what happens is the person over a period of time who has heights of confidence will move down to person with lesser confidence and person who had lesser confidence will move down move up to heights of confidence because of energy flow this also creates conflicts and now the person with higher confidence is new person so he expects the person with lower confidence today who's b who was once a person with higher confidence to behave and react to situations in a way he would have reacted two or three years back it is not going to happen because the person B has transferred the energy to you for your well-being because that's a natural flow of physics. That's a natural flow of psychology. So if you look at it from energy transfer point of view, I think it is very important to look at the scientific aspect and then say a person with high energy has moved down to a person with low energy and I have acquired the high energy so the way I look at things today may be more confident and more rational but the person today on the opposite side is not the same person who was with high energy once upon a time but he is with low energy so we have to behave in such a way that he behaved to us once upon a time but humans uh, fail to look at things from that perspective and we want to look at things rationally when the other person wants to look at things from an emotional point of view. This again leads to uh, relationship conflicts in most of the situation. Something which also came to my mind is it is very very difficult for B when he is going through an emotional situation to communicate the experience that what he or she is going through in an exact way and make A understand. It's very difficult because it's it's the experience because the more you try to communicate it becomes as if you are forcing A to understand what you are going through. The more you try to communicate it becomes as if you are thrusting your uh, you know um, you know uh, experience of pain on A and it may the A may feel that it is burden and A is A may feel that B is coming as an intrusion in my uh, you know everyday aspect of work or everyday life or it is it is curbing my freedom but for B it is not about curbing the freedom it is not about coming in the way of that is not the objective that is not the intent it is all about B wanted the recognition and wanted 
A to understand that the act of yours, okay, is paining me so much. It could be so simple for you, but it is paining me so much. So why don't you please understand and recognize? This is also the other thing which most of the times which may uh, lead to conflict where B may try to choose words and try to explain the experience to the A but A being in a different mode or A being in a rational mode in a higher energy state and higher confidence state may not be in a position to look at B's situation from a um, uh, from an angle of um, B's experience. Typically we call it as empathy but I am just demonstrating it in more detailed manner because one word sometimes doesn't demonstrate the actual intensity of what we wanted to communicate. So broadly if I feel in my experience these are the reasons that why relationship conflicts happen and uh, why we tend to choose uh, certain words which may not recognize the emotions of B and why we tend to react or respond to B's uh, you know, uh, uh, um, situation in a different manner. So how can we probably summarize it or probably, you know, I don't want to even use the word called summarize. What are the key takeaways of my experience or the speeches? One, if you are in a higher energy state, if you are confident, if there is a concern which is coming from the other side, Please don't expect the other person also to be confident and look at the situation in a matured way because the other person is in a low energy state. It could be because he would have transferred the entire energy to you and he might be in the low energy state. So don't expect the other person to be and look at the situation in the same way as you are looking. So try to be in this state and accept that he is in a low energy state and try to look at things in that way. Second. The concern for B is not that he didn't get whatever he, he or she wanted. The concern for B may be we not able to understand the pain that what he or she is going through just because we didn't give what he wanted. So the concern is he needs recognition of the relationship. He needs recognition of his emotions rather than what he actually wanted or she wanted. So we should look at it from that angle. Third, we, some of the statements that we use to take a risk free to take a risk free stand for that day so that we can proceed our life for example which could be like don't talk to me don't message me don't mail me for one day two days P is already in an emotional trauma he wants recognition for his emotions if you curb his emotions it leads to depression and that is where it leads to uh, you know some of the um, drastic decisions that people take. What people may want at that point in time is recognition of the emotions and give it. Take the two or three minutes time. Four, please understand the brain's comfort zone is to take a stand. Right or wrong, good or bad, it's my mistake or somebody's mistake. That's a natural tendency for a brain. But rather than looking at it from good or bad, right or wrong, who is right and who is wrong, Look at it from the point of, let it be my mistake, let it be his mistake. But there is a person who is suffering. What can I do about suffering? Because it is he is part and parcel of this journey of the relationship. He is part and parcel of this entire journey of the relationship. It has been built over a decade. It has been built over five years. He is suffering. What can I do for his suffering is more important than whether I am right or wrong or it is his mistake or my mistake or it is good or bad. That should be the possible uh, way of, uh, or, or, you know, solution to it. So these are some takeaways I would say uh, to look at a relationship conflict. I'm sure uh, it may be a monologue when I spoke about this. I'm sure uh, it may be a, a lengthy conversation or it may be even, it's not even a conversation, it's a lengthy monologue where you feel, uh, you know, some of the things could be tweaked, some of the things could be a perspective, but if it is of some use to you, to handle conflict resolution, to handle conflicts, you know, uh, you know, I would be thankful to God, I would be thankful to the Almighty, I would be thankful to my friends, I would be thankful to everybody in my life journey who has made me think from this angle to, um, you know, share my views about uh, relationship conflicts. 
However, I can talk about psychological aspect of it. I can talk about the multiple aspects from different behaviors. But I wanted to make it very simple from a layman perspective. As if you are talk, conversing with a friend and you are listening. I would suggest you please pick points which are relevant to you <clears throat> and apply it. If it is of beneficial to you, I am thankful to uh, all the people who has given me this opportunity. <clears throat> Thank you so much. In case you want to talk to me at any point in time, uh, please write in to me at prabhu at the rate afmoi.in or text to my phone which is 99628978698. I repeat, you can write into my email at prabhu at the rate afmoi.in or you can also text to me in my mobile number 99628978698. And I will be there for anybody who needs any kind of support over phone or you know mail and you want to talk to me, this is a problem. Whatever I, I could do my best, I would definitely do over phone. I'm not an expert, but I can at least, you know, share my experiences with you so that uh, you feel better for that moment. I'm always available from that point of view. Thank you, my dear friends. Take care.